Okay, let's keep on cutting out pieces of paper and placing them. So I just did the eyeball, that one. It doesn't quite exactly line up, so I can always do Command T and work with it, grow it on different sides, hold down Shift to stretch it. I can rotate it, all with Command T. I can use my arrow keys until I feel it lines up exactly. because I want to, to build that skill. Now here is a good, a good opportunity for me to use duplicate. So instead of doing that all with the oval for the other eye, why don't I just hit Command J, hit Command T, and then instead of warp or rotate, I'm gonna use flip horizontal. And it's gonna take my duplicate and it's gonna flip it symmetrically. And then if I hold down Shift and I move it, I'll get that little guideline that shows me that it stays aligned. And that's how I can preserve symmetry, which is very common in these emojis and in digital graphics. And now I've got my eyes. What's the next biggest shape? I think it's the tongue. Now the tongue's a different color. So I'm going to turn off the shapes that are overlapping the tongue so I can get the solid color. And then I'm going to build with, this is a tricky one, but I'm going to build it with an oval. I'm not going to use custom shapes. First, I'm going to build it with an oval. Use the move tool. Place it where I want it. I can change its color, right, by double clicking and then getting this little corner of the pink from the base layer. Say OK. And now I want to hit Command T and warp it. And like up here, I just worked on the bottom edge. Here I just want to work on the top edge. And I just want to bring that top edge down. Trying to stay pretty straight so it stays symmetrical. Keeping the anchors aligned on their lines. Hmm. sure why it's not letting me there you go grab that edge now I can bring the corners in just push on these anchors and try to get pretty close to that shape with the warp tool, the warp tool is not good at sharp edges. So what I'm not going to get, I can get the curve, but I'm not going to get that sharp corner. So I'm going to do that with triangle shapes tilted and added on after the fact. Right now I just want that curve. And just like using vectors in Illustrator, it's all about really precise clicking. It can be really annoying, but it's why a tablet's not as useful as just a mouse or a trackpad when you're working with vectors. But we will be learning ways to kind of free form and free draw vectors, just not within Photoshop. Okay, so I've got the curve. Pretty happy with that curve on the top and the bottom. So I hit return. This is what it looks like. It's just missing those little corners. So 
So how can I add those corners that make it look like a tongue? I'm going to use the triangle tool. But if you don't have a triangle tool, you can use the polygon tool. And then where it says up in the options, number of sides, I can put three. And voila, I get a triangle. So the triangle tool is just an option for those who forget that triangles are polygons. Just like any shape, I can warp it, I can pull it, try to get that point to it. Then use the move tool. Oops. It's easy to lose your lose it when it's the exact same color. So I might even make it a different color for the time being. So it's easy to to keep it in place and then I'm going to line it up. There we go. And then I'm going to duplicate it, command J, and then I'm going to hit command T, I'm going to flip it horizontally. Then I'm going to hold down shift and drag it over to the other side. Where surprisingly, my actual original emoji isn't perfectly symmetrical. But that's fine. So I just adapt it. Okay, so now I want to change the color back on both of them. And so this is what's called a compound shape. It's made up of multiple shapes. But all together, it looks like the same. Oh, and I got, because of the transparency, I got the color slightly wrong, so let me get it right. Because it's these are being filled in completely with all one pixel color. There we go. And it will give you, it will make it look like it has a stroke on it. just while you've selected that layer. And you can do fine tune adjustments, but we're not going for perfection here. We're just learning the tool. All right, pretty good. Pretty good. All right now there's the big shape behind that mouth. So I'm going to put that in over the top to begin with. And again, I'm going to use a big ellipse to get that top curve. And I'm going to use the color underneath to match the color. Then I'm going to turn on my overlay layer, my onion skin layer, in order to see it. And then I'm going to right click and free transform and then warp. You can do Command T2, warp the bottom. I'm trying to get it to match. Which honestly takes more discipline than just making something that I think would look better. <laughs> With simpler tools. Command Z works. If you push something too far, you can always push it back. 
I'm going to bring those bottom corners up. I'm going to have to bring them up quite a bit and then bring the middle down, I think. To try to get that sharpness to the bottom. Again, the warp tool is not great at sharp edges, but this one is still curved. It's just a shallower curve. It's getting there. There we go. And then if you can get close but not quite there, remember you can always hit return to apply that warp and then warp it again. So I'm almost there. I just don't have the bottom edge quite right. So then I can hit Command-T, right-click within, hit warp, and then I can bring down hopefully this bottom edge a little bit. And use these handles. Get it pretty close. Then watch your top. So much to do. And with a path, you can just grab the edges of the path and kind of warp from there, too. All right, and then I hit return. I've got that shape. Problem is, it's on top of my other shape. So how do I move it down? I'm going to use Command Left Bracket, and it will move it down through my layers. So these are the shapes I've built so far. Pretty good. Now with the X's, I have a, for the eyes, I have some options. I could do circle, 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 rectangle, rectangle, and then duplicate it. And that's probably what I'll end up doing. But they are also a letter form. And so type tools using the T is another way you can get vector shapes. So if I click with the type tool, it's going to fill it in with what's called Latin text. I'm just going to make it a capital X. And then I can select it and I can choose from the fonts that are already loaded in. And in new versions of Photoshop, it's nice because they give you examples of them. And I want something that looks kind of bubble-ish and big. And then I can see if there's any... There's no, like, um, there's rougher versions, but there's no real bold to it. But sometimes type tools can be a fun way to play with your shapes. Something like that, maybe. Now, these are actually what are called typefaces. We call them fonts, but fonts are actually modifications to typefaces. So bold and italic and underlined, those are fonts. 